Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 8. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for episode 13. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. And subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any future DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode was crazy. Something absolutely insane happens at the end of the episode. Of course, you guys have watched it if you're watching this review. So we'll talk about that later in the video so stick around for the whole video as we break down the whole episode bit by bit talking about exactly what happened and my thoughts my reactions and what it means for the future of the show especially this season and so this episode was titled death falls so you can kind of infer someone is gonna die and someone is gonna fall and the way i interpreted it was this is probably gonna be death storm's final episode because He's called Death Storm and Death Falls means probably he's going to fall. Anyway, let's go ahead and start this review by going to the beginning of the episode. So it begins with Eddie, who we saw at the end of the previous episode. And he was there with Iris. He was being all weird, kind of smirking. And so he's actually there with Iris, or so it seems. And even Sue sees him. So, you know, he's tapping into both of their minds. And so he's like, I'm Iris's fiance as Sue wakes up and Sue's like, what the hell is going on here? So that's how the episode begins. Then we go over to like a news report and we see CCPD has put the city into a lockdown. That was talked about last episode, but it didn't actually get put into effect until this episode. We don't really see much of that, but it's inferred that, yeah, people are locked away because of the threat of Death Storm. But Chester fixes the machine. I think they call it the Mac. And so, basically, Frost is going to be changed into a being like Deathstorm, which actually happens towards the end of the episode, and she gets a cool name, she gets a cool new look, but we're going to talk about that when we get to that. And so, at the same time, we have Caitlyn, who is remembering her dad's death, basically Deathstorm feeding into, you know, her grief, and she's basically slowly becoming more and more like Deathstorm, and sort of descending into this new path. Okay, so then at that point, just afterwards, the power dies in Star Labs and this kind of kicks in the big story of this episode, or at least what leads to the kind of final act where we have the final bits of the episode. And so with the power dying out in Star Labs, everyone is separated into different rooms. Barry is locked away in the room with Gideon because he's trying to get information about Iris's condition. Gideon's like, yeah, I can help you with that, and then she shuts off. And so at that point, Barry's mum shows up, and you get this kind of cool shot where it just tracks him really fast towards her. It's all very disorientating, they use wide lenses and everything to make things seem a little bit off balance and not right. And that's because things aren't right, and even though, say at first, Barry's mum is trying to convince him that she's real, and basically, you know, this is Barry's fault about all of the stuff that's going on because, you know, Deathstorm's trying to tap into their greatest fears and sort of their grief. And at the same time, you have Esperanza, who's back, and Chester's dad is back, and also it's revealed that Eddie is in fact one of these as well that has been sent by Deathstorm, one of the ghosts, and so he's haunting Iris and also Sue's there with him and Iris. So what happens is they all get split up and everyone gets locked into the room, like Chester and Allegra's room gets really hot, and basically like the thermostat is dead so they can't tell how hot it is and they're basically slowly cooking to death in that room with their ghosts surrounding them and they have to somehow find a way to beat their ghosts and to kind of come together to overcome the grief that they feel and so Barry gets it pretty bad as well over where he is Iris gets it pretty bad at one point Eddie is even like you know recreating his death and he talks about his death quite a lot and how it was kind of in insignificant because Thorn has come back so many times and Eddie thought he was being a hero, but Deathstorm was trying to tap into Iris and basically be like, look, you wasted this life, like, Eddie is dead for no reason and look at this, oh, Eddie is back and Eddie is literally bleeding in front of you and even at one point, Iris was shot as well, or so, you know, it seemed in her head and it came across to us on screen. Okay, so Ronnie's form is back, and he tries to get into Frost's mind. And so he tries to convince her that she is not a real person, but just an experiment, and she is nothing more than that, and that is why she doesn't have any ghosts after her, because he's not sending anything towards her. 
And so this is obviously Deathstorm coming to her in the form of Ronnie, so it's good to have Ronnie back again. But Deathstorm also reveals that his home is further away than hell. I just thought that was a cool note in the dialogue in that scene because that kind of like establishes a little bit where it is like it's a long long way away and it's presumably worse than hell. Now we don't know if we're gonna ever see that world. I probably am gonna guess we're not gonna see it because of the way the episode ends but it was interesting to hear about it. Okay so Mark shows up at Star Labs and he broke into Fast Track Labs. Obviously we saw Fast Track Labs right when we returned with episodes at the mid-season. Fast Track Labs are probably going to make a return later in the season once Bart and Nora return at some point because Bart formed a connection with Avery who we saw in that episode and so yeah he basically comes to Star Labs and he stole something to basically help Frost turn into the anti-death storm. I don't remember what specifically he stole but basically it just helps Chester's machine and it's just a way for Frost to try and defeat death storm by becoming the anti-death storm and absorbing all of these powers and they go on and they continue trying to practice it and Frost's transformation actually doesn't turn out the way that it's supposed to because she's not truly alive or so it seems. And so the machine cannot put particles into the body of someone without a consciousness, that's what they say. And so this obviously gets to Frost and we'll get to how that actually progresses in just a moment. But let's just track back a little bit because Iris is supposedly going to die. And lots of this is being teased about, you know, her condition and how the fact that, you know, maybe it isn't curable and everyone is extremely sad about that. Like Barry, that is part of his grief in this episode, but also Iris as she kind of fears her own demise, I guess. And so Eddie tries to get into her mind and that she's going to have a pointless death, just like Eddie. And so things seem strange when Sue turns out to be happy and that's because Joe storms into hell because she set off an alarm. However, Joe's surprise attack doesn't work because Joe has a lot of grief too and even Sue has grief even though she seemed happy for an instant. But that's because she knew that Joe was coming so her mind was preoccupied, I guess. And so shortly after that, their minds are invaded by the grief that they feel and they're overwhelmed as well. And so then you have Iris who gets shot or, you know, in her mind she seems to look like she's got like a similar bullet hole wound that Eddie's got. And so Eddie's ghost has that recreation moment of his death. And then at the same time over in Star Labs you have Allegra and Chester sweating like mad in that boiling hot room. And there's a little bit of dialogue there to tease that they have a future, basically trying to hammer in the point that yes, Allegra and Chester are going to be together and that's something that the show really wants to do because in all these episodes they've been teasing it so so much but it's not happened yet. The closest that's happened to that is actually this episode probably because they hold hands and yes it may be just like a spur of the moment bit however it's definitely going to happen because like Esperanza teases this that they have a future and you know Esperanza and Allegra had a past so yeah it was like very obvious what they were going for but then Barry gets flashbacks of Oliver's death he's going through the cycles of all of his grief because Barry has so much like earlier in the episode you see his dad dying by the hands of Zoom and you know hitting to that last point of Oliver's death is definitely very hard hitting for him and so he gets engulfed by blue flames at that point and so does everyone else that is feeling grief because Deathstorm is overpowering all of them. It actually looked very cool, I thought the special effects in this episode were great like they've been in the last couple of episodes and you know the whole way that they shot it was interesting the fact that you know they're trying to emphasize their isolation and how kind of stuck they are within their own grief and that's definitely comes across in the filmmaking and so let's move on we have Caitlin who says I can see the endless stars and that is because she is becoming like a literal zombie her eyes are turning black she's being engulfed by death storm and she's slowly becoming the bride and so at that point you have you know after all of this, with everyone feeling all the grief, basically feeding Caitlyn, feeding Deathstorm to try and create his perfect bride, Frost is finally able to tap into her emotions and actually prove that she has a consciousness, that she has feelings. And so at that point, her transformation actually works 
and you see her going up into like blue flames and she becomes Hellfrost. Well, that is the name that they give her. I thought it was kind of funny that they gave her like a kind of nickname straight away or she said, I am Hellfrost. It was quite cool. I thought the transformation was nice. I have to say that the makeup was like a little bit weird. They did like some weird eyebrow makeup. It was a bit like reflective. I don't know if that was on purpose or not. But that was like a tiny bit distracting, but that kind of went away. I think that was just first because, you know, you're seeing the old Frost turning into a new Frost. And this is Hellfrost, Frost, and so she's got black hair. She's got like black makeup rather than the fully like white get up of Frost, obviously to invoke this kind of anti-death storm, the opposite of Frost, that being Hellfrost. Frost. So, you know, she has flame powers rather than cold powers although it is cold fusion but yeah she looked great i thought it was a really great reveal and you know it was very kind of powerful with caitlin basically turning into this zombie and then frost is like nope i'm gonna prove that i can save you i'm gonna save my sister by tapping into my emotions and so Hellfrost fights with deathstorm and they have this fight all around the city and she's basically able to defeat deathstorm so much so that they hit the ground and then she starts to absorb Deathstorm. He starts disintegrating just like Thorn that we've seen in the past when he's died a couple of times and he disintegrates. So basically Hellfrost is able to absorb all of Deathstorm and basically take that in. But at that point you realize, okay, so she's either really overpowered and she's able to take that because she's just that powerful or it's going to be too much to her and this isn't the end of what we're seeing and it's true that's not the end of what we're seeing even though the death of Deathstorm and you know taking Deathstorm down was absolutely awesome like I love the way that they finished it and it felt like a good ending to be honest like I don't think it felt rushed it felt like they did a good job with the Deathstorm storyline so I commend them on that however at this point Frost actually falls to the ground and she's actually incapacitated and she's overwhelmed by the powers and you know the energy within inside of her and they talk about like Deathstorm basically being like this for a millennia and he's able to obviously control all of this grief and all of this power but Frost has never felt this kind of power it's a different kind of power to her power that she was originally given when she was created by her dad and so Frost seems fine at first but things turn out for the worse and also Caitlyn at the same time at Star Labs turns out to be okay she wakes up from her coma and she's able to get up and so then we rush over to Star Labs because Barry brings Frost back and things get manic as her vitals are crashing and Caitlyn is trying to save her but then it turns out just as she opens her eyes and everything seems okay and she takes one final look at Caitlyn and I thought this moment was very touching and Actually, it kind of got to me a little bit. She then closes her eyes. And so it turns out that in fact, Frost is officially dead and Caitlyn and Barry weren't able to save her. And this really, really gets to, you know, our characters, but also to us, I feel like this is kind of a shock. I wasn't expecting Frost to die. I heard some theories online that they thought someone was gonna die because the episode after this is titled Funeral for a Friend. And so some people were theorizing Frost, but I really didn't believe that was actually going to happen because Frost has been such a significant part of The Flash for a long time now, since even season two, but especially leading into season three when she fully came to be rather than, you know, just being Frost from Earth 2 or something like that. So it was actually kind of shocking, to be honest. Like, I did not expect to see Frost go, especially they've been building this storyline up with Mark for a while now and she's very happy and everything but i guess they've been leading towards this because she would do anything to save caitlin and this was her sacrifice and so the next episode we are going to get a funeral for a friend and that is going to be for frost because she's officially dead and deathstorm is gone she was actually able to be successful and be a hero and actually stop deathstorm but it comes at a big price and so then we go over to Star Labs, well, in another room, and we see Iris and Sue are back, and also Joe is there. And so it was nice to see Iris back with the rest of the team for once. But then, at that point, Barry and Caitlin walk into the room, 
and they say they have bad news and they reveal that Frost is dead and that she didn't make it through and so that moment I was just like holy crap like what's going on and the whole team starts breaking down and crying it was very very emotional and this is going to be a big thing that affects Team Flash for quite a long time especially the rest of this season because they've been working so close with Frost especially recently that this is going to hit them hard and you could tell that from the end of the episode and so then the episode fades out into black and that's what we got. So next episode is going to be a big episode because we're going to see the funeral for Frost and we're going to see the progression into whoever the new big bad is and as of right now Deathstorm has been defeated, Eddie isn't going to be the villain, I don't think it's Cobalt Blue like some people have been theorizing, so it's going to be someone completely new. I think it could have something to do with Bart and Nora because we know that they're coming back and they mention Fast Track Labs again in this episode so it's possible that a new speedster could be just that person who is the next villain of the season. So I don't know how many specific episodes we have left but this is the end seemingly of the graphic novel or at least next episode maybe they will count as the end because you get the funeral so it's kind of like a conclusion to the story. So that's about it for this video guys, thank you guys so much for watching, if you did enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. Also if you want to come and join our community please be sure to click on the link in the description below to join our discord, you can talk over there, we have lots of people and we're trying to reach like 100 people on the discord so please be sure to go check it out i'm going to be announcing this in pretty much the end of most videos so yeah go over there talk about the flash talk about anything and i'll see you over there but in the meantime click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video and i'll catch you guys later goodbye I see.